Hey guys, it's Miss Batty here, back with lesson two on our series on populations and resources. I'm so glad that you decided to come back and join me in continuing to collect evidence about the moon jelly population increase. After lesson one, I had the opportunity to hear from some of my students about their ideas. And so I'm really excited to get to share with you some of their thinking so that you can compare and contrast whether you were having similar or different ideas. What you're going to need for the lesson today is a pencil or pen, some lined or blank paper, and if you have the packet pages available that go with this lesson, then go ahead and get those out as well. Something that's optional, but will make the next 20 to 25 minutes a little bit more exciting, would be for you to check in with a family member, a sibling, a friend, uh, to see if they would be able to play the population game with you or check in with you over the next little bit. For the population game, I recommend seeing if you have around the house two dice, oops, <laughs> and some tokens to play the game. Now, I didn't have any tokens at my house, so I made my own using little pieces of paper. I also thought that you could make your own tokens by using something small like rice, something like dried beans, or maybe you have games around the house that also have small tokens. You're probably gonna need about 20 of these small tokens to play the game. You also will need a game board, but this is e made easily with a piece of paper. We'll get to that in a little bit more, but I just wanted to first share with you some ideas that my students had about our last lesson. We realized in our last lesson that we were gonna be studying what is causing the size of the moon jelly populations in the Arctic Ocean to increase so quickly. Some of my students were able to get back to me and their ideas were awesome. I'm wondering if any of you had similar ones. One idea that I heard was that the moon jellies are clustering and causing themselves to have defense mechanisms from this, this grouping. And this is decreasing the number of deaths that happen. I also heard that many students thought that global warming or climate change is allowing them to have more births. Many students were thinking that the warmer waters make it easier for the jellyfish to have births and therefore the population size is growing. Another idea I also had was about the, the decrease in deaths. Students were thinking that a predator or the predator of the moon jellies for some reason is not eating them as often and they are either dying out or eating something else. These were all such great ideas and if you didn't have one of these ideas, that's totally okay. I think it's so awesome that we have all of these different ways of thinking about it. Right now, we have no evidence really about what's going on. And so that's why we have to collect some of this evidence to figure out which of these claims could be correct. We're gonna start with our evidence collection today by thinking a little bit more about the idea of births and deaths. Last time, we saw that within a population, Organisms are always being born, so populations are growing, but also organisms are always dying, which causes populations to decrease. We're gonna take a look today at how births and deaths can affect the size of populations. To do this, we're gonna play a little game. I recommend that if you have the availability of the, the items for this game, that you play by yourself or with a family member or maybe a friend that you can message. For the game, you're going to need small pieces that you can use as tokens. Like I said, I made my own out of pieces of paper, but there are many things I'm sure you can find around the house to make sure that you can play. I'm going to use die to help me figure out how many births and deaths are in a population. If you don't have die around the house, that's totally okay. You can just decide without rolling the die to figure it out for you. You also will need either a cup or a piece of paper to track the number of organisms in your population. I just made a circle on a blank piece of paper and wrote the word population in, and I plan to take 
my tokens on and off to help me count how many organisms are in my population. If you are using the dice roll, you are going to decide what the numbers correspond to births and deaths. So for example, I plan to say that all the odd numbers on the dice are going to be deaths. All of the even numbers are going to be births. So if I roll my dice and find out that I have a one and a six, then I can say that I need to have some deaths because I rolled a death number and some births. Now, I'm gonna say that a one is one death and a six is three births. You can choose a number between one and three for the births and deaths that are occurring in your population. As you're playing the rounds, you want to record the information in a data table. If you have the packet pages, then you already have the table drawn for you. If not, you might wanna pause the video for a moment and draw a data table that looks something like mine. Later, we are gonna be graphing our data and so you also might want to take the time to draw out this graph as well. When you're ready, you can start playing the rounds of, of uh, birth and death game. If you don't have these materials available at home, or if you just wanna play with me, then continue watching the video and we can play together. So, like I said, I am going to make sure that the odd numbers on my dice are deaths and the even numbers are births. I made myself a little key so that I can remember what my rolls mean. So let's get going. Okay, so I rolled a six and I also rolled a three. Now a six means that there were three births and a three means that there were two deaths. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in my table. I'm gonna say that I had three births and my three means that I had two deaths. Now I started with, and I'm gonna write this here so I can remember, 14 of my tokens in the center. So if I have 14 tokens in the center, I'm going to add my three tokens for the three births that occurred. But I also have to take out two tokens for the deaths that occurred. So this then evens out to, if I count up all my tokens, 15 organisms. So I'm gonna add that in my table. Okay, let's go again. What numbers are we gonna roll? All right, this time I rolled a five and I rolled a four. So if we're looking at the key, a four means that I have two births, and a five means that I have three deaths. So I'm gonna go ahead and write that in. And again, I'm gonna add two tokens back into my circle because I got two births, but I also have to take out three organisms because I had three deaths. Ugh. So again, let's count it up. And it looks like I only have one, two, 14 organisms this time in my population circle. I'm gonna do it one more time. Okay, I have a five and a two. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look. Five means three deaths and a two means, oh no, only one birth. So this time there's more births than deaths. So again, I'm gonna add one in um, that will make 15, but then I have to take three out for my three deaths. So 14, 13, and uh, we only have now 12, 12 or organisms in my population. So if I was going to continue playing, then I would play six rounds of this and then add up the total number of births that occurred and deaths that occurred. Now, I played this a little earlier with my friend, and so I already have some data for us to be able to look at. So let's go ahead and take a look. When I was playing earlier, 
I played a bunch of different rounds with my friend. And I noticed that some things were occurring. I want you to pause the video for a moment or take a look at the data and see whether you're noticing anything. As you're doing that, I'm gonna go ahead and graph my data by plotting the points on a line graph and drawing a line of best fit. Go ahead and look at our data tables while I'll draw our graphs. There's our graphs on the right side of the screen. I color coded them as you might see, um, red and yellow and blue for the different rounds that we are doing. Um, and I want you to take a second to see if you notice anything or any patterns about the, the shape of the graph and our data over here. Hmm. So something I noticed is it really looks like this red line or my first trial, I had an increasing population. I started with only 14, but I ended with 20, which is awesome. In my second round, I actually ended up with 14 organisms, so I didn't really have a change. Although I did go up to 15 at a point, but then kind of stayed around at 14. In my third round, the opposite thing kind of happened, and it looks like I ended up with far less organisms than I started. Now, something I'm noticing when I'm looking at my data is the totals seem to have a pattern here. There seems to be a relationship between the total numbers of births and deaths that were occurring. Although each individual round had different numbers and I see threes and twos and ones all in the individual rounds, it looks like the totals, the ratios of birth to death seems to follow a pattern. I'm noticing that when there were more total births than deaths, it seems like my best line fit goes upwards for an increasing population. When I have the same number of births and deaths, my population seems to be staying the same. And finally, when I have more deaths than births, my population seems to be decreasing. Is that what you notice too? This is kind of interesting. Now, what we say when populations are staying the same over time is they have stability. This word stability can be used for anything that occurs when something stays mostly the same over time. Notice this is shown here in our yellow line where we have pretty much the same number of population or organisms in the population over time. The change occurs when something becomes different. So definitely we see that this population was changing in the red and the blue. Now this is really interesting. Does staying the same mean that nothing is happening to the population? I thought births and deaths were always occurring. So how can a population stay the same even if births and deaths are occurring? That seems a little strange to me. Let's watch a video to collect more evidence about these stable versus changing populations. This is a system. The system is stable, meaning the level of liquid isn't going up or down. But that doesn't mean that nothing's happening in this system. This top valve allows liquid to be added to the tank, while the bottom valve allows the liquid to be removed from the tank. Right now, the amount of liquid being added is the same as the amount of liquid being removed. This makes the system stable because the level of liquid stays the same over time. If either the amount being added or the amount being removed changes, the system will no longer be stable. It will change. The level of liquid will increase or decrease. If we change the valves so that more is being added than is being removed, the level of liquid will increase. 
This can be done by either loosening the top valve to let more in or tightening the bottom valve to let less out. Either way, the effect is the same. More is being added than is being removed. Now let's try to get the level of liquid to decrease. To get the level of liquid to decrease, we need to change the valves so that less is being added than is being removed. We can do this by either tightening the top valve to let less in or loosening the bottom valve to let more out. Either way, the effect is the same. Less is being added than is being removed. The liquid will decrease. So a system can be stable even if something is being added and removed from the system, as long as the amount being added equals the amount being removed. But if the amount being added or removed changes, the system will change. If more is added than removed, the amount will increase. If less is added than removed, the amount will decrease. Wow, that was a really great visual to help me understand why populations can say the same even when births are occurring and deaths are occurring. If the number of births and deaths in a given time are equal, then the population will be stable. Just like when we saw that liquid was being added to the container and being taken away at the same time. So stability or stable populations doesn't mean nothing is happening. It means that the births and the deaths are equal on the scale. If there are more births than deaths in a given time, then the size of the population will increase. That was what was occurring when water was being added into the tank, but the bottom valve was closed and more was added than removed. If there are fewer births than deaths, then the size of the population will decrease just like in our video where we saw that the population or the water level was changing when the bottom valve was open, but the top was closed. This is really interesting, and it seems to make sense for what might be occurring in the moon jelly populations. Now we know that moon jelly populations are increasing, we're gonna be looking for evidence for what might be occurring to their birth and death rates in our next lesson. I'm really excited to continue collecting evidence with you and figuring out what is going on with these moon jelly populations. I'll see you next time. Bye!